Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Craig. And it's been a while since we've been in my own patch of paradise, so I thought we are well overdue, me giving you a look around what's going on. My garden's looking a bit rubbish at this time of year. I've been spending most of my time in here getting the stock ready for the shop, so there are so many new plants bursting into life, from seed, from cuttings, and just things growing on from the previous years. So I'd love to show you around and show you what tropical and exotic plants I've got growing in my UK greenhouse. So the first thing I wanna show you is this way of starting seeds. These are peat-free and plastic-free coir pellets that come as a flat disc, you soak them in water and they expand. And I have found for seedlings like this, this is a geranium madarensi, and this is the rarer white flowering form called uh, geranium madarensi guernsey white. For some plants, these pellets are absolutely brilliant because this seedling can root and fill the pellet and the roots will start to grow out of the side of the pellet. So when I put it on, there is absolutely no root disturbance. This plant will just go into a bigger container, it can get its roots out and just grow into all of that goodness of the compost in the bigger pot. So if you haven't sowed seeds into the coir pellets before, I'd, I'd recommend giving it a go. They are really, really good. And I'm actually thinking of selling plugs um, of plants that I've grown, homegrown tropical and exotic plants in these pellets so that you guys can buy them cheaper and then grow them on at home yourselves. Um, let me know what you think in the comments if you'd like to buy plugs about this sort of size. Now, if you don't already know, geranium madarensi is not your typical geranium. It has these beautiful, big, dissected leaves that look really, really jungly, and they're held up on this thick, pinkish, red, almost maroon stem. And as the plant matures, the stem grows up, the leaves fold down, and it sort of props itself up. And that's in anticipation of the flower. In its second or third year, Geranium madarensi blooms with this massive, almost like an umbel on steroids, of magenta pink flowers. Or in the case of uh, Geranium madarensi guernsey white, those flowers will be white. And the flowers are so long lasting because they just keep coming and coming and coming. The one I've had flower in the garden a couple of years back must have flowered for maybe four to six weeks. And they're monocarpic, which means that they'll die after flowering but imagine how many seeds you get off of one plant because there are so many flowers. Um, geranium madarensi, don't be put off by the fact it's a geranium. It's an absolutely fantastic plant for a tropical or exotic style garden. And they are hardy for me here. I'm growing in zone nine. Um, but with a bit of fleece in most of the UK, any severe cold weather should be shrugged off by geranium madarensi. I'd just give it a go, it's a great plant. I'm also growing this. This is another plant that some people are put off uh, because of its common name. It's the giant cow parsley. Blah, boring, it's like a wildflower. Wrong. I love this plant because these dissected leaves just get bigger and bigger and bigger and it grows on a tall stem that has stripes on it, almost like bamboo. And again, in its second or third year, this evergreen, massive leafy plant forms a huge umbel covered in white flowers that the pollinators absolutely love. So it's a exotic plant, I think it's from Madeira, that will bring pollinators into your garden and just bring your tropical style garden alive. Now, these are really easy from seed, um, so I'm selling them quite cheaply on the website and quite young. So if you fancy giving something different a go, again, I'm zone nine and this is completely hardy for me, so you might want to experiment uh, wherever you're growing your tropical style garden. This one is Milano Selenum Decipens, is its Latin name. Um, I think it's a great plant. I know people that hate it, but I love it. And remember, it's all about growing what you like, not what everyone else likes. Make it your patch of paradise, don't worry about them. Something exciting that I'm growing for the first time in the Grow Paradise greenhouse is Sonchus or Sonchus. Now, I first saw these plants growing in Mike Clifford's garden, and I'm pretty certain that he popularized the cultivation of these plants among tropical and exotic plant enthusiasts, at least here in the UK. They're the giant tree dandelion. Yeah, dandelion. It's basically our native dandelion on steroids. The flowers are so similar, but they are absolutely enormous. And the common name, tree dandelion, 
alludes to the fact that these plants can grow really, really tall. And this one, Soncus fruticosus, which is just a tiny little seedling at the moment, gets beautiful uh, wavy edged lobed lance shaped leaves. They're really difficult to, just, to uh, describe, but I've seen them growing in Mike's garden. They were, are growing at Abbotsbury and they're just really architectural plants. And again, for zone nine here in the UK, it's been completely hardy. So I'd urge you to give it a go. And I think I remember Mike Clifford saying that he used to feed leaves of this giant dandelion to his tortoise. And I absolutely loved it because obviously turtles eat dandelions, don't they? So yeah, if you've got turtles or <laughs> you like architectural plants, try Soncus. And thank you, Mike, for sending the seeds for this one. It's really exciting to try something new. Okay, so next up is something that has gone through trends. It's a plant that has so many different species and it's related to potatoes. It is a Selenum. And this tiny little seedling is Selenum quitoensi. I think I've pronounced that right. Now this will grow to have large leaves about this sort of size, um, furry with small spikes going along the leaves. It's a great fast growing foliage plant. Now I'm growing some from seed uh, myself. I'll grow them in my garden and sell some, but I'm also selling the seed for this one because it is so easy from seed. Uh, so give it a go. It's great for jungly foliage and it's unlike so many other selenums. I'm actually growing another type of selenum, which is just here. This one is Selenum pericanthos or pericanthum. Now that one is the really ferocious looking Selenum with serrated edged leaves and enormous orange spikes that follow up through the leaf veins. Now I don't normally grow spiky plants because they fight back and I don't like plants that fight back and draw blood. But the foliage on that one looks absolutely fantastic. So again, first time for me growing it for the shop and selling seeds. So it's one I'm gonna give a go. Feel free to get some seeds and grow along. And something else I'm growing from seed, which I had great success with last year, and it's a plant I absolutely love, is Brugmansia. Now this is the cold group Brugmansia. This is a Brugmansia sanguinea, which has the lovely, it's a smaller flower with a narrow bell. And it comes, I think it starts the throat's yellow and goes down to red, and it's got yellow stripes going down the flower. I absolutely love this. Now, I grew two plants last year from seed, one for myself and one for my mother. Annoyingly, hers flowered first. So mine is yet to flower, but I had some seed left over and they've all germinated. So there'll be lots of Brugmansia in the shop this year. I think they are great plants. And this one, I've not left it out here. So I, I haven't tested the hardiness for stone nine, but it is supposed to be one of the hardier Brugmansia. And I've seen pictures online of them growing out of greenhouses. So the roots are in the greenhouse and the plant has just grown absolutely enormous out of the greenhouse here in the UK and it's survived. So I think so long as the roots are protected and they've got good drainage, there's a chance this one's gonna be hardier. So feel free to experiment. Brugmansia sanguinea or angel trumpets they're sometimes called. And I've got so many different angel trumpets. Just down underneath the bench here, I bought loads of angel trumpets off a chap I met on Instagram who goes by the name of I Like to Brug It. And he had so many different cultivars and a couple of plants that I just, I wanted to give a go. Um, I don't really have the space in my garden, but you know me, I'll squeeze in as much as I can. So this year, hopefully by mid summer to late summer, I'm gonna have loads of giant, sweetly scented angel trumpet blooms. So fingers crossed, we'll see. I've managed to overwinter them all, just keeping them dormant and leafless in their pots on the floor in the greenhouse because they, they're fine so long as you keep them frost free and dry. Um, yeah, Brugmansias hopefully will be a theme in the Grow Paradise Garden this year. Something else I've managed to grow, which I've not had a chance to grow before, purely for the fact I couldn't get my hands on any fresh seeds, was the loquat tree. This is Areobotrya japonica. And at the moment, it's just a tall, tall, a small sapling. But these are quite fast growing, evergreen trees that have, you can already see it here, lovely thick corrugated foliage. 
This is one of my favorite evergreen trees for a tropical style garden. So I'm glad that I managed to get some fresh seed. Now most of these have sold already. I've got a second batch of seed coming on. Um, so hopefully we'll have some more, but it's great to be able to grow this plant homegrown because it just avoids all of the environmental impact of importing big plants. So homegrown loquats, and they're gonna be more used to this weather. So fantastic. I'm really pleased that I managed to give this one a go. Now, over the winter months, I've been feeding an addiction. I discovered bromeliads. I didn't discover bromeliads. I fell in love with bromeliads. Other people discovered them many years ago. You can see some collecting behind me. I've got another just here. And I've started having a go at growing some from seed. So these tiny little seedlings are Bilbergia brasiliensis. And they will grow into these the same sort of shape as most bromeliads, and hopefully they'll color up to have a nice dark purple color, similar to the bromeliad behind me, which I'll show you closer. And they, I love bromeliads because they're so tough. Normally, the type of bromeliad I love is the epiphytic bromeliads. That's bromeliads that grow in the branches of trees and rainforests and cloud forests and habitats like that, because they're so easy to look after. You can grow them in a small pot. They hold water in the central rosette. They almost look after themselves and they produce pups and offset. So for someone like me who loves to propagate and sells plants, that's fantastic. Now some offset faster than others. Um, and this species is a new one to me. And you've seen how small it is now. So subscribe and see how long it takes it to grow. But yeah, I absolutely love bromeliads. Actually, let me show you some of the bromeliads I'm growing. I wanted to show you this one because it's an absolute beauty. It's one of my newest ones. It's a Blanchettiana, but I can't remember the full name and the label's fallen off, so I'll have to dig it out. But this is an orange form bromeliad. It will get absolutely enormous and has this beautiful flower spike. And I'm hoping this will offset. But these coir pots, are fantastic for bromeliads because it lets so much water through. The drainage is great. And like I say, a lot of bromeliads grow as epiphytes. So they're used to just landing in a tree and catching whatever rainwater runs off. And they hold loads of water in that central rosette. Let's see, there you go. So they like to look after themselves. And you get color, evergreen color, which is fantastic. Let me see if I can get another one out. Mm. Oh, this is a new plant that I got after a swap with Carl from Turnit Tropical. Oh. I sent him a pup off of one of my Bilbergia Hallelujahs. So he sent me this unknown hybrid, or unnamed hybrid. I think it's an absolute beauty. And you see these, this silver banding on the foliage. Hopefully, this is the sort of coloration that will come up on those green seedlings I showed you earlier. I think this one's absolutely beautiful. And cheers, Carl, for doing the swap. I, I think that's one of the best things about the plant world, right? People just share and swap. I mean, look how tropical that looks. Now, if I had a garden big enough to have big trees in it, I would tuck this into all the crevices in the trunk and along the branch, and it would just make it look like a, a tropical rainforest. In fact, I think in Green Planet, they called it a sky garden. That's the part of the forest that has all of the epiphytic plants growing along the trunks in the canopies of the tree. I love that one. Let's see if I can squeeze it back in. This is the only thing with having a small greenhouse is it's a careful balance not to knock things off. And as I say that, I've knocked things on the floor. Don't worry, they're my plants, not the plants for sale. And then you get smaller bromeliads, like this Neogerella. Now, I think this one's Fireball variegata, and you can see what I mean about pups. So this one is the mother plant, and it sent this pup out. And you can just chop that and stick it into its own pot with good drainage, orchid bark, and it will root and be happy. I love these plants, I love them so much. In case you haven't noticed, if you're new to this channel, I tend to go through fads and I get heavily addicted to plants. 
and I will want every plant in that species or that genus or every version. Last year I went a bit mad on aeoniums. So I've got loads of variegated ones in different sizes. Over winter was bromeliads. Maybe it'll be something different by summer. Perhaps the Brugmansias will come back into the limelight. Or comment below and let me know if you're the same. If you discover a new plant and then you just want every single version and variety. Hopefully it's not just me. Now, as I've been talking, you might have noticed just behind me here is my Lobelia fruticosa, which is flowering. Now I've had this plant for two or three years. It was gifted to me as a young plant. So maybe it's three years old and I'm so pleased to see it flowering. And I hope it doesn't come into full bloom before the warmer weather comes because I'd love to get this plant out into the garden so that we can enjoy it amongst all of the other tropical and exotic plants. Um, but let me take you off this tripod and we'll have a look around the greenhouse and we'll have a closer look at this Lobelia flower because I think it's gonna be a stunner. So this is the foliage of the Lobelia. And if you watch programs about mountain gorillas or cloud forests, you'll see these growing everywhere. Once you get your eye in, you'll see that it's a plant that obviously self seeds and grows rapidly in the right climate, but here they're really well behaved. And this is the flower. And you can see it's going to be a spire of loads of tiny magenta flowers. I say tiny, they're quite large really. But it's still forming, so fingers crossed that it won't flower fully until the warmer weather comes, hopefully mid, maybe early to mid spring. But to overwinter these bigger exotic plants, I can show you. I've got them all in smaller pots, maybe one, two or three litre pots and I keep them much drier than I would in the growing season. And I only water right on the base of the plant if I see the plant wilting. And for me, this has been a great way to overwinter plants. I've got the pot for my uh, mountain papaya here, which is a couple of years old, uh, Begonia luxuriens. This is a plant similar to Albizia. I think it's called Para, Paris. Synthes lepantha, or something like that. Um, Roldana, which is hardy, but I've been growing these from cuttings. And yeah, just keeping things dry is a good way to overwinter. Another bromeliad here. This one's Foster's favorite, and it's a lovely like red wine color. See what I mean? They're so varied. Oh, I'm hooked. Loads of seedlings along here. My sugar cane has actually started to grow again and is bending up onto the ceiling. So I'm gonna have a go at propagating this one and selling some in the shop because it was popular last year. And again, I've just kept this dry in its pot, dry-ish. Um, the pot's absolutely full of roots, uh, but keeping it frost-free in here, my greenhouse doesn't really drop below eight, nine degrees. It's been completely happy. Another plant that's growing is my Brugmansia Maya, which I think is sometimes called Sunset. This is a beautiful variegated Brugmansia. Um, I took loads of cuttings off this. This one's a bit harder to root than others, but I think because it's kept growing most of the winter, I should get an early flush of flowers. Fingers crossed. Now if you're wondering about my propagation in my greenhouse. Now remember this greenhouse is only six foot by eight foot, so I'm squeezing in as much as possible. But this is where I start my seeds and I've just got a bit of cardboard for insulation and a heat mat underneath, and then this propagation tray. And I just use sheets of perspex over the pots to keep the humidity in so they don't dry out. And as soon as they shoot, like this, and this is Oreo Panax Niger, which is a new plant for me. I'll take the plastic off so that it doesn't damp off. And so far this seems to be working. Once they get to a good enough size, I'll pot them on and bring them down into my Vito pod. Now you've seen this bit of kit before, it could do with a bit of clean, but I keep this at around 20 degrees and with the lights on top, it's just a great humid environment for young plants that have been potted on to grow happily away. Um, I use the lights at the moment, I can turn them off in the summer, but just on the dull winter and spring days, it just helps keep things growing. And I've got loads of interesting plants in here. Lots of things for the shop, um, 
some rarities for myself. But I love this Vito pod. I've done a review of it. I'll link it in the description. Um, yeah, fantastic stackable propagator. Actually, this one's stackable as well. I've got extra layers for this and this was only 30 quid. So I'll link this as well because this is well worth doing if you're on a budget and I love budget gardening. And if you've heard a gentle hum in this video, that will be from my hydropod. Now I've seen a lot of other nurseries and gardeners using this bit of kit. So I spent my hard earned money on this and I will do a video review soon. But so far so good. Some things have worked, some things haven't, but it's a really, really clean and tidy way of propagating and I don't get in trouble because I don't have jars all over the window sills in the greenhouse, uh, in the kitchen or in the rest of the house. So yeah, there'll be a video review of this hydropod coming up soon. Now here's last year's mad obsession, aeoniums. And you can see I've got variegated ones, the flat tabula form there, colorful variegated ones, dark leaved. They're lovely, lovely plants. And I think they actually look really good next to the bromeliads. Um, and these plants are great because they grow in winter. So they're all looking fantastic now and getting much bigger. And in summer they shut down. So you don't really need to water them. Just let them be, bring them out, um, and they'll be fine. But yeah, Aeoniums was last year's obsession. I think they'll come back into the limelight again this year. And I'm gonna try these out the front of my house because it's shady there. And according to Surreal Succulents, who are experts in succulents, obviously, if you keep them a bit shaded in the summer, they won't go dormant and they might keep growing. So I'll experiment with that this year. Let's just back out past the uh, Talansia. That Spanish moss it's called, or it's not Spanish and it's not a moss, but this is a lovely air plant. So there's a quick look around the Grow Paradise greenhouse and it's so nice to be able to start showing you around my patch of paradise again. Now, if you've got any questions about any of the plants you've seen, just leave a comment at the bottom of the video and feel free to check out the plant and seed shop and have a go at growing your own plants for your patch of paradise. It's so rewarding. Now, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. It's the best way to support this channel. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.